what Cambridge Analytica uh, did is help help Steve Bannon really build an arsenal of information weapons and a roadmap for culture change. When when um, when Steve came and, and first uh, and first met with us, you know, he talked about how he wanted to change the culture of America, and and you know, one of the one of the things that came up in that conversation was, well, if you if you want to change politics through culture, you first have to be able to measure culture, and in order to measure culture, you have to understand what are the units of culture, and so one of the things that I told him is I said, arguably, the units of culture are people. And so if we can measure people or measure the units of people, which are their personality traits and their, their disposition, that we can then um, you know, map out and quantify aspects of, 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 of American culture. What we were trying to do is take uh, people's social media profiles and predict their personality traits and psychological disposition from that data. So when you think about, you know, all the information that you put out on, on social media, you really are curating your identity online. And this really becomes um, you know, your digital portrait or sort of a, a, an online clone of, of who you are. And so what, what we did is we used applications that uh, people would join, they would fill out psychological surveys, and then that app would then go and pull all of their Facebook data um, and relate how they answered uh, the questions on the survey to their Facebook data. Um, and from that, we were able to then make inferences or predictions about um, people who we haven't yet uh, spoken to, but we have pulled their Facebook data. So, so it, it allowed us to profile um, upwards of 50 million Americans over the span of a couple months um, and, and understand um, not only their, their personality traits, but how they think and, and how they would likely react to different kinds of information. And what is it exactly that we need to do in order to, to pick at certain uh, mental or emotional vulnerabilities so that those people would behave in a particular way that was conducive to Steve Bannon's objective? His uh, philosophy comes from something called the Breitbart Doctrine. And the Breitbart Doctrine is um, that politics exists downstream from culture. So if you want to uh, change politics, you need to first change culture. And he came to, you know, he, he's a guy that has a very militant view as to what, uh, what a culture war involves. Um, and if you think about, you know, just the, the, the very idea of a culture war, you need an arsenal of weaponry in order to fight that war. And so, so Steve uh, came to SCL Group um, after an introduction and was really interested in the fact that you know, we had a background as a firm in military information operations. And he wanted to see if we could apply some of the um, experiments that we were doing with psychological profiling um, and in, into, a, into a, uh, a political environment in the United States. It's maybe helpful to understand a little bit more about what information operations is. So in military doctrine, you've got something called the five dimensions of your battle space. So that's land, air, sea, space, and then information. So information is often called the fifth dimension battle space. And that's where SCL operates in. Um, and, and within, within um, information operations, there's a really important concept called informational dominance, which is that in order to uh, win the information war in, in, your, in your battle space, you need to uh, gain the upper hand and gain total dominance of all the information streams around your target. And so what Cambridge Analytica does is it takes a lot of techniques um, from information operations, it's digitized them and uses them in elections. So what that means is that um, when you look at uh, when you look at standard political messaging, you know I, I'm coming at you as the voter, and I, I'm you're you're aware that I'm trying to convince you something. You're aware that uh, that you know you're, you're engaging in a dialogue with me or seeing my ad. The the, the difference is that with with information operations, um, I am trying not to I am trying to change how you actually perceive um, reality. So. If you look at a battlefield situation, for example, if I'm a general, I can't, I can't, if I'm a general from country A, I can't go and use a marketing approach to a general from country B. If I say, hey, hey, general, like, you know, send your troops to the hill over there, that's not going to work because they know that, we're, you know, we're, we're fighting with each other. So 
I need to change the perception of, of my opponent so that uh, they think that they should go you know, over here. Um, and so information operations is based on the idea that we need to change how people uh, perceive their reality and perceive what's around them. Um, and, and, and from that, they, they will then act in ways that they might not otherwise act. So to put, to put it simply, what Cambridge Analytica does is disinformation and, and fake news. Um, but they've done it in a really powerful way by uh, powering that disinformation with algorithms. So I started at um, a company called SCL Group, which is a UK-based uh, defense contractor as, um, a res as the research director in 2013. Um, my role predominantly involved uh, looking at how the company uh, operated and the methods that they had and really taking them online into a digital space. So um, the projects that I worked on initially were to study how uh, personality traits uh, in particular are the precursors to behavior and then also what are the relationships between um, you know, online data and, and those, those psychological traits so that we could uh, see if we could build uh, profiling algorithms. And those algorithms um, were then acquired by uh, Robert Mercer and Steve Bannon um, to then form the basis of Cambridge Analytica. Initially, it was quite exciting. Um, I'm, I, I'm quite a curious person by nature. And at the time, you know, I was 23, 24, and the idea that um, you know, a billionaire was going to fund the research that uh, I was interested in was really appealing. Um, I think, uh, you know, that, that led me and, and others on, on, on the team that was working on the project to uh, make mistakes. Um, we didn't do a good job at due diligence, um, you know, and, and I think, you know, after the Facebook harvesting program got set up and then um, the, 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 the meetings with the, the alt-right started to begin, I, I started getting a feeling that maybe this is not exactly the company that I want to be involved with, let alone help set up. Um, it, it's, it's very difficult for me as a person to sit with you know, a, a very right-wing evangelical Christian talking about um, you know, fighting against equal marriage, for example. Um, or, you know, it, 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 you know, me as, a, as, an, as an immigrant, although I'm speaking to, you know, Canadians right now, me as an immigrant in, in the UK, uh, working on messaging that um, ultimately would make people um, very skeptical of immigration, um, I, I found problematic. What people need to understand is that um, Technology and, and data uh, in politics is, is moving at a very rapid pace. And I think that um, you know, we all need to have a conversation about what is appropriate use of data and analytics in, in, our, in our political system. I think we need to really understand that um, hyper-targeted messaging, um, where you know, we are saying certain things to some people and certain things to other people, um, you know, on one hand, is is allows us to have more personalized communication. It allows you know political parties to um, to 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 speak about issues that may be more relevant to a certain person. But at the same time, it also erodes the public forum that is necessary to have a functioning democracy. So I think we really need to take a step back and look at what is social media doing to our democracy. What is data doing to our democracy? Um, not necessarily to, you know, criticize the fact that we have, you know, data or, or, or social media platforms and that, you know, political parties use them. I myself, you know, am a, am a consultant in, in data and politics. But, um, but I think we really do need to, to, to take a step back and have that conversation and understand, you know, more broadly, what is this doing to our discussions in the public forum? Cambridge Analytica almost certainly played a role in electing Donald Trump. Um, for me, uh, I find that uh, you know it, it, the fact that the fact that I played a role in Cambridge Analytica setting it up, I, I'm quite remorseful as to uh, you know as to what's happened and how this company, what this company uh, became. 
Um, but yeah, it, it, it almost certainly played a role in, in electing the current president. The methods that Cambridge Analytica has used um, to, uh, for example, harvest uh, tens of millions of Facebook users' uh, private information without consent uh, is, is deeply problematic. I think that uh, the algorithms uh, that they've built in terms of psychological profiling, uh, using that data, using that private data that was acquired without consent is problematic. I think that its uh, relationships with the military are problematic. Its origin uh, is in SCL Group, which is a defense contractor. Um, and so I think that you know, people should know uh, about you know, the, the background of this company and, and how this company operates and, and what they did to people's private data. I don't think that uh, I've done anything that would warrant uh, jail, but um, you know, speaking up um, speaking up against uh, people like Steve Bannon or, or the Mercers, some very powerful Republican billionaires, is, you know, frankly intimidating. Um, but I think it's the right thing to do. But I think that um, it's important for people to know what this company does, its impact on uh, American elections and elections around the world, um, and, and also more broadly, <clears throat> to hold social media companies like Facebook uh, to account. I am accepting my share of responsibility uh, in what happens with Cambridge Analytica and you know I, I think that Facebook should also accept some share of responsibility as to what happened.